Picture this. You're going about your day, minding your own business, when suddenly someone throws a verbal jab your way. It could be a snide comment from a co-worker, a rude remark from a stranger, or a hurtful statement from someone you care about. Disrespect, in all its forms, has a way of catching us off guard and stirring up a whirlwind of emotions, anger, hurt, frustration, and even self-doubt. But what if I told you that there's a way to face these situations with unshakable calm and wisdom? A way to not only shield yourself from the sting of disrespect, but also to transform these challenges into opportunities for growth and self-discovery. Enter Stoicism, an ancient philosophy that has been providing people with practical tools for navigating life's ups and downs for centuries. Stoicism isn't about suppressing your emotions or putting on a fake smile in the face of adversity. It's about developing the mental resilience and clarity to see things for what they are and to respond in a way that's aligned with your values and inner peace. It's about taking back the power that we often give away to external circumstances and other people's opinions. In this video, we'll be diving deep into the heart of Stoic wisdom, exploring 10 powerful lessons that can transform the way you handle disrespect and other challenges in your life. These aren't just abstract ideas or feel-good platitudes, they're practical, actionable strategies that have stood the test of time, helping countless individuals across the ages to cultivate inner strength, resilience and peace of mind. So, let's get started. Lesson 1. Understand Control The Stoics have a powerful concept known as the dichotomy of control. This idea, simple on the surface but profound in its implications, states that some things are within our control and others are not. When it comes to handling disrespect, understanding and internalizing this concept can be a game changer. So what is within our control? Our own thoughts, opinions, actions and responses. What's not in our control? Pretty much everything else including the actions and words of others. When someone disrespects you, your initial reaction might be to feel hurt, angry, or even to lash out in return. But the Stoics invite us to take a step back and ask ourselves, is this person's behavior within my control? The answer, of course, is no. We can't control what others say or do, no matter how much we might want to. Trying to change someone else's behavior is like trying to command the tides. It's a futile exercise that only leads to frustration and disappointment. But what we can control is our own response to that behavior. We can choose how we interpret it, how much importance we give it, and how we let it affect our inner state. Let's consider an example. Imagine you're in a meeting at work and a colleague makes a snide comment about your latest project. Your instant reaction might be to feel insulted and defensive. You might want to fire back with a cutting remark of your own or to let their words eat away at your confidence. But what if instead you paused and reminded yourself that their opinion is out of your control? What if you chose to let their words roll off you like water off a duck's back, secure in the knowledge that your self-worth isn't dependent on their approval. This is the power of the dichotomy of control, by focusing on what we can influence, our own thoughts and actions, and letting go of what we can't, other people's behavior, we take back the reins of our emotional well-being. We stop being reactive and start being proactive, shaping our inner world through the power of choice. But this isn't about becoming a doormat or pretending that disrespect doesn't hurt. It's about recognizing that while we can't control the slings and arrows that come our way, we can control how we respond to them. We can choose to maintain our dignity and integrity, to respond with wisdom and grace, and to not let others' negativity pull us out of our center. Putting this into practice takes time and effort. It's a muscle that we need to exercise regularly, 
catching ourselves when we start to get caught up in what's out of our control and gently bringing our focus back to what we can influence. But the more we do it, the more natural it becomes until it's a habit of mind that allows us to navigate even the roughest interpersonal waters with steady calm. Lesson 2. Embrace Wisdom In the face of disrespect, it's easy to get caught up in our emotional reactions. We might feel the hot flush of anger, the bitter sting of hurt, or the cold grip of resentment. But Stoicism encourages us to take a step back from these initial responses and to engage with the situation from a place of wisdom. Wisdom, in the Stoic sense, isn't just about having knowledge or intellect. It's about applying that knowledge in a way that's practical, beneficial, and aligned with our values. It's about seeing things clearly, without the distortions of ego or emotion, and choosing to respond in a way that's reasoned, measured, and constructive. When faced with disrespect, Stoic wisdom invites us to ask ourselves some key questions. Why is this bothering me so much? Is the disrespect a reflection of the other person's issues rather than my own? How can I respond in a way that's true to my principles and that contributes to my long-term well-being? By engaging with these questions, we move from a reactive state to a reflective one. We give ourselves the space to consider the situation from different angles, to put it in perspective, and to choose a response that's wise rather than simply emotionally driven. This doesn't mean that we ignore or suppress our feelings. Stoicism recognizes the value of emotions as signals that can guide us, but it also understands that unchecked emotions can lead us astray, causing us to act in ways that we later regret. By tempering our emotions with wisdom, we can respond to disrespect in a way that's firm but fair, assertive but not aggressive. Stoic wisdom also encourages us to look beyond the immediate situation and to consider the bigger picture. Is this instance of disrespect a one-off event or part of a larger pattern? What might be driving the other person's behavior? By broadening our perspective, we can often find a way to address the root of the problem rather than just its symptoms. Ultimately, Embracing wisdom in the face of disrespect is about choosing to be the best version of ourselves, regardless of how others are behaving. It's about staying true to our values, maintaining our dignity, and refusing to let others' negativity pull us down to their level. Of course, this is easier said than done. In the heat of the moment, when we feel attacked or belittled, it's natural to want to strike back or to let our hurt feelings take over. But with practice, we can train ourselves to take that crucial step back, to breathe, and to engage our wisdom before we engage our words or actions. One practical way to cultivate this wisdom is through regular reflection and self-examination. By setting aside time each day to review our experiences, to consider our responses, and to contemplate the teachings of Stoic philosophers and other wise figures, we strengthen our ability to apply wisdom in the moment. Lesson 3. Respond with Compassion When we're faced with disrespect, our initial reaction is often one of defensiveness or aggression. We might want to lash out, to put the other person in their place, or to withdraw in hurt and anger. But Stoicism offers a different path, the path of compassion. Now, compassion doesn't mean being a pushover or tolerating mistreatment. It doesn't mean making excuses for others' bad behavior or failing to stand up for ourselves. Instead, it means seeking to understand the other person's perspective even as we maintain our own boundaries and self-respect. The Stoics recognized that people often act out of ignorance rather than malice. They might be operating from flawed assumptions, reacting from their own hurt or fear, or simply not understanding the impact of their words and actions. When we respond to disrespect with compassion, 
We're choosing to see the humanity behind the behavior. This doesn't excuse the disrespect, but it can change how we frame it and how we choose to respond. Instead of seeing the other person as an enemy to be defeated, we can see them as a fellow human being who is struggling and in need of understanding. So what does compassionate response look like in practice? It might mean taking a moment to breathe and center ourselves before reacting so that we can respond from a place of calm rather than reactivity. It might mean asking questions to better understand where the other person is coming from rather than making assumptions about their motives. It might also mean setting clear, firm boundaries while still expressing care and respect for the other person. For example, you might say something like, I value our relationship, but I need you to speak to me respectfully. Let's talk about this in a way that works for both of us. Responding with compassion doesn't guarantee that the other person will change their behavior or apologize for their disrespect, but it does ensure that we're acting in a way that's aligned with our own values and that contributes to a more understanding, empathetic world. It's also important to remember that compassion includes self-compassion. When we're dealing with disrespect, it's easy to start questioning ourselves, wondering if we somehow deserve the mistreatment or if we're overreacting. Stoicism reminds us to extend the same understanding and kindness to ourselves that we aim to extend to others. This means acknowledging our own feelings without judgment and reminding ourselves that we're doing our best in a difficult situation. It means treating ourselves with patience and care, even as we navigate the challenges of interpersonal conflict. Cultivating a compassionate response takes practice and patience. It requires us to step back from our immediate emotional reactions and to choose a more thoughtful, empathetic approach. But the more we practice, the more natural it becomes until responding with compassion is our default mode, even in the face of disrespect. And here's the beautiful thing. When we respond to disrespect with compassion, we're not just improving our own experience and emotional state. We're also modeling a different way of being, one that has the potential to shift the entire dynamic of the situation. Our calm, understanding, presence can be a powerful invitation for the other person to step into a more respectful, compassionate space themselves. Lesson 4. Practice Stoic Mindfulness In our fast-paced, ever-connected modern world, it's easy to get caught up in a constant stream of reactions and distractions. We jump from one thing to the next, often without pausing to truly process our experiences or to consider our responses. But Stoicism offers a powerful antidote to this reactivity. The practice of mindfulness. Now, mindfulness has become something of a buzzword in recent years. But its roots go back to ancient philosophies like Stoicism. At its core, mindfulness is about being present and aware in the moment, observing our thoughts and feelings without getting caught up in them. For the Stoics, Mindfulness was a key tool for maintaining inner calm and clarity in the face of life's challenges. By learning to observe their own mental and emotional processes, they could gain a measure of detachment and perspective, allowing them to respond to situations rather than simply reacting. This is especially relevant when it comes to dealing with disrespect. When someone says or does something hurtful, our initial response is often a surge of emotion. Anger, hurt, defensiveness. These feelings can quickly overpower us, leading us to lash out or withdraw in ways we later regret. But with the practice of stoic mindfulness, we can learn to catch ourselves in these moments. We can notice the emotions rising within us, acknowledge their presence, but also recognize that we don't have to be controlled by them. We can take a step back, breathe, and choose a more measured, intentional response. This isn't about suppressing or denying our emotions. The Stoics understood that feelings are a natural and important part of the human experience. 
But they also recognize that we have the power to decide how much those feelings influence our actions. So how do we cultivate stoic mindfulness in the face of disrespect? One key technique is the pause. When we feel ourselves getting triggered by someone's words or actions, we can make a conscious choice to take a moment before reacting. In that pause, we can take a few deep breaths, observe our internal state, and remind ourselves of our stoic principles. We might ask ourselves questions like, why is this bothering me so much? What is the wisest, most compassionate way to respond? What outcome do I want to achieve in this interaction? By creating this space between stimulus and response, we give ourselves the opportunity to engage our rational mind rather than our reactive emotions. We can consider the situation more objectively, put it in perspective, and choose a course of action that's in line with our values. Another key aspect of Stoic mindfulness is regular reflection and self-examination. The Stoics believed in setting aside time each day to review their thoughts, feelings and actions, considering where they had lived up to their principles and where they had fallen short. This practice of self-awareness and self-correction is crucial for developing the mindfulness muscle we can bring this reflective practice to our experiences of disrespect, too. After an interaction where we felt disrespected, we can take some time to process what happened. We can consider our own role in the situation, the choices we made, and what we might do differently next time. We can also reflect on what the experience taught us about ourselves, our triggers, and our values. Over time, as we practice Stoic mindfulness, we may find that our relationship to disrespect starts to shift. We become less reactive, less easily thrown off balance by others' words and actions. We develop a greater sense of inner stability and resilience, rooted in our own values and sense of self. This doesn't mean we become invulnerable to hurt or insult but it does mean we have the tools to process those experiences in a healthy way, to extract lessons and growth from them, and to maintain our own sense of integrity and peace regardless of others' behavior. Lesson 5. View as Growth Opportunities One of the most transformative aspects of Stoic philosophy is its ability to reframe challenges as opportunities for growth and development. Where others might see obstacles or setbacks, the Stoics saw chances to strengthen their character, test their principles, and expand their understanding. This perspective is especially valuable when it comes to dealing with disrespect. It's natural to view disrespectful behavior as a negative experience, something to be avoided or endured. But what if we could shift our mindset to see these moments as gifts in disguise? Every instance of disrespect Every hurtful comment or dismissive action is an opportunity for us to practice our Stoic principles. It's a chance to exercise our patience, our compassion, our resilience. It's a training ground for our emotional muscles, helping us develop greater strength and flexibility in the face of life's challenges. Think of it like going to the gym for your mind and heart. Just as you might lift weights to build physical strength, you can use experiences of disrespect to build your inner strength. Each time you choose to respond with calm, with wisdom, with grace, you're reinforcing those qualities within yourself. You're creating new patterns of thought and behavior that will serve you well beyond this one interaction. But growth opportunities aren't just about developing our own character. They're also about deepening our understanding of others and of the world around us. When someone is disrespectful towards us, it's an invitation to look beyond the surface of their behavior and to consider the deeper factors that might be driving it. Are they acting out of fear, insecurity or pain? Are they responding to pressures or stresses that we can't see? By asking these questions, we move from a place of judgment to a place of curiosity and empathy. We open ourselves up to learning more about the complexities of human behavior and motivation. This doesn't mean we excuse or tolerate mistreatment, 
but it does mean we approach it with a spirit of understanding, recognizing that everyone is fighting battles we know nothing about. This expanded perspective can help us respond in ways that are more constructive and less reactive. Viewing disrespect as a growth opportunity also helps us maintain a sense of agency and empowerment, even in difficult situations. Instead of feeling like a victim of someone else's bad behavior, we can see ourselves as active participants in our own learning and development. We can focus on what we can control, our own responses, our own growth, rather than getting caught up in what we can't. Of course, adopting this mindset isn't always easy. In the heat of the moment, when we feel hurt or angry, it can be hard to step back and see the bigger picture. That's where the practice of stoic mindfulness comes in. By creating space between stimulus and response, we give ourselves the opportunity to reframe the situation in a more constructive light. We can also make it a regular practice to reflect on our experiences of disrespect, looking for the lessons and opportunities within them. We might ask ourselves, what did this experience reveal about my own triggers and patterns? How did I handle it? And what might I do differently next time? What can I learn from the other person's perspective, even if I don't agree with their actions? By engaging in this kind of reflective practice, we train ourselves to see challenges as chances for growth. We develop a more resilient, adaptable mindset that can find opportunity in even the toughest interpersonal situations. Ultimately, viewing disrespect as a growth opportunity is about reclaiming our power in the face of difficult circumstances. It's about refusing to be diminished by others' negative behavior and instead using it as fuel for our own development and understanding. It's about choosing to meet adversity with curiosity, with courage, and with a commitment to our own ongoing growth. Lesson 6. Maintain inner peace. In the face of disrespect, it's easy to get knocked off balance. We might feel a surge of anger, a wave of hurt, a churning of anxiety. These emotions can be intense and overwhelming, threatening to sweep us away from our center. But Stoicism offers a powerful anchor in these turbulent times, the cultivation of inner peace. For the Stoics, inner peace wasn't about avoiding or suppressing difficult emotions. Rather, it was about developing the mental and emotional resilience to weather those storms without losing sight of what matters most. At the heart of this resilience is a fundamental Stoic principle, the recognition that our inner state is ultimately under our own control. We can't always choose what happens to us, but we can always choose how we respond. We can't control others' behavior, but we can control our own thoughts, emotions, and actions. This is a deeply empowering realization. It means that no matter what kind of disrespect or mistreatment we face, we always have the power to maintain our own sense of peace and integrity. We can choose to respond with calm, with wisdom, with compassion, even if the other person is choosing to act with hostility or cruelty. But how do we cultivate this inner peace in the face of disrespect? One key strategy is to practice what the Stoics called the art of acquiescence, the ability to accept what we cannot change while still working to change what we can. In the context of disrespect, this might mean acknowledging and accepting the reality of the other person's behavior. We might not like it, we might not think it's right or fair, but we recognize that it is what it is. We let go of the need to control or change the other person and instead focus on what we can control, our own responses. This doesn't mean we become doormats or pushovers. We can still set boundaries, express our feelings, and take action to protect ourselves as needed. But we do so from a place of inner calm and clarity, rather than reactivity and turmoil. Another key to maintaining inner peace is to keep a sense of perspective. When we're in the middle of a difficult interaction, it's easy to get tunnel vision, 
to feel like this moment is everything. But Stoicism encourages us to zoom out to see the bigger picture. We might ask ourselves, will this matter in a week, a month, a year? Is this truly important in the grand scheme of things? By putting the disrespect in context, we can often take some of the sting out of it. We can remind ourselves of our own broader values and goals and choose to invest our energy where it truly matters. Cultivating inner peace also means taking care of ourselves on a fundamental level. The Stoics emphasized the importance of self-care, not in the modern sense of bubble baths and chocolate, but in the sense of attending to our basic needs and nurturing our own well-being. This means taking care of our physical health through proper diet, exercise and rest. It means engaging in activities and practices that bring us joy and fulfillment, whether that's spending time in nature, pursuing a hobby or connecting with loved ones. It means making space for reflection, meditation or other practices that help us stay grounded and centered. By tending to our own needs and nurturing our own sense of peace, we build up our reserves of resilience and equanimity. We become less reactive to the ups and downs of external circumstances, less easily thrown off balance by others' behavior. Ultimately, maintaining inner peace in the face of disrespect is a practice, a muscle we build over time. It requires patience, self-compassion, and a willingness to keep showing up for ourselves, even in difficult moments. But the rewards of this practice are immense. As we develop our capacity for inner peace, we find that we're able to navigate challenges with greater ease and grace. We're less burdened by the weight of others' opinions and actions, more able to stay true to ourselves and our own values. We also become a source of that peace for others. When we can remain centered and compassionate in the face of disrespect, we model a different way of being. We invite the other person and anyone else witnessing the interaction to rise to a higher level of discourse and connection. Lesson 7. Setting Boundaries with Stoic Wisdom While Stoicism emphasizes the importance of maintaining inner peace and responding to challenges with wisdom and compassion, it also recognizes the need for healthy boundaries. Setting boundaries is not about building walls or shutting others out, but about creating the conditions for mutual respect, understanding and growth. In the context of dealing with disrespect, boundaries are particularly important. They help us communicate what we will and will not tolerate, what we need to feel safe and respected, and how we expect to be treated. They also serve as a form of self-care, helping us protect our time, energy, and emotional well-being. But setting boundaries can be challenging, especially if we're not used to doing so, or if we fear the other person's reaction. This is where Stoic wisdom can be particularly helpful. The Stoics offer several principles that can guide us in setting boundaries in a way that is clear, firm, and compassionate. The first principle is clarity. When setting a boundary in response to disrespect, it's important to be as clear and specific as possible about what the issue is and what needs to change. This means avoiding vague or passive communication and instead stating directly what behavior is problematic and what the consequences will be if it continues. For example, instead of saying you're being disrespectful, we might say, when you raise your voice and interrupt me, I feel disrespected. I need you to speak to me calmly and let me finish my thoughts. If you continue to yell, I'll need to end this conversation. The second principle is firmness. Boundaries are not effective if they are not enforced. When we set a boundary, we need to be prepared to follow through on the consequences we've laid out. This doesn't mean being harsh or punitive but it does mean being consistent and holding both ourselves and the other person accountable. If we've told someone that we'll leave the conversation if they continue to yell, then we need to actually leave if the yelling persists. 
If we've said we won't tolerate name-calling, then we need to disengage or address it every time it happens. By being firm in our boundaries, we send a clear message about what we value and what we expect in our interactions. The third principle is compassion. Even as we set firm boundaries, we can do so with understanding and empathy. We recognize that the other person's disrespectful behavior is likely coming from a place of pain, fear, or unmet needs. While their behavior is not acceptable, they are still a human being worthy of basic respect and compassion. This doesn't mean we tolerate mistreatment, but it does mean we approach the situation with a spirit of understanding. We might say something like, I understand that you're feeling frustrated, and I want to find a way to discuss this that works for both of us. But I need you to speak to me respectfully in order for that to happen. By combining firmness and compassion, we create boundaries that are strong but not rigid, clear but not cruel. We open the door to more constructive dialogue and problem-solving while also protecting our own well-being. Setting boundaries in this way is not always easy, and it does not guarantee that the other person will respond positively. Some people may react with anger, defensiveness, or escalation when confronted with a boundary. This is where the Stoic principles of inner peace and accepting what is out of our control come into play. We can't control how others react to our boundaries, but we can control how we respond to their reaction. We can choose to remain calm, to reaffirm our boundary, and to disengage if necessary. We can also choose to view their reaction not as a reflection on us, but as information about where they are in their own journey. Ultimately, setting boundaries with stoic wisdom is about creating the conditions for mutual respect and understanding. It's about communicating our needs clearly and compassionately, while also respecting the autonomy and humanity of others. It's about focusing on what we can control, our own actions and responses, while letting go of what we can't. By practicing this skill, we not only protect our own well-being in the face of disrespect, but we also model a way of relating that is grounded in both strength and empathy. We create space for more authentic, constructive connections with others and with ourselves. Lesson 8. Practicing Forgiveness the Stoic Way Forgiveness can be one of the most challenging aspects of dealing with disrespect, when we've been hurt, belittled, or mistreated, it's natural to feel anger, resentment, even a desire for revenge. But holding on to these negative emotions can be like drinking poison and expecting the other person to suffer. It corrodes our own peace and well-being, while often having little impact on the person who harmed us. This is where the Stoic practice of forgiveness comes in. For the Stoics, Forgiveness wasn't about condoning bad behavior or forgetting the harm done. Rather, it was about freeing ourselves from the burden of anger and resentment so that we could move forward with clarity and peace. The Stoic approach to forgiveness starts with understanding. We seek to understand the other person's perspective and motivations, even if we don't agree with their actions. We recognize that their behavior, however hurtful, likely stems from their own pain, fear, or ignorance. As the Stoic philosopher Seneca wrote, all crimes, so far as guilt is concerned, are completed even before the accomplishment of the deed. This doesn't excuse the behavior, but it does put it in context. It helps us see the person who harmed us not as a monster, but as a flawed human being struggling with their own demons. This understanding is the foundation for compassion, which is key to forgiveness. Next, Stoicism encourages us to focus on what we can control. We can't control the past, and we can't control the other person's actions or feelings, but we can control our own thoughts, emotions, and responses. We can choose to let go of anger and resentment, 
not because the other person deserves it, but because we deserve peace. This letting go is a process, not a single event. It might involve journaling about our feelings, talking to a trusted friend or therapist, or engaging in a symbolic act of release, like writing a letter we don't send. It might require us to practice self-compassion, reminding ourselves that our feelings are valid, even as we work to release their hold on us. Forgiveness in the Stoic tradition also involves a forward-looking focus. Rather than dwelling on the past hurt, we ask ourselves how we can learn and grow from the experience. We might reflect on what the incident revealed about our own boundaries or expectations and how we can communicate these more effectively in the future. We might identify skills we need to develop, like assertiveness or emotional regulation, to better handle similar situations going forward. Importantly, forgiveness does not mean we have to reconcile with the person who disrespected us or tolerate ongoing mistreatment. Sometimes the wisest and most compassionate thing we can do is to distance ourselves from toxic or abusive situations. Forgiveness is about letting go of the emotional baggage, not necessarily restoring the relationship. In fact, Stoicism recognizes that some people may not be safe or healthy for us to engage with, even if we've forgiven them. Part of Stoic wisdom is discerning when to walk away, when to set firm boundaries, and when to seek outside support or intervention. Forgiveness is a gift we give ourselves, not a free pass for others' misbehavior. Ultimately, practicing forgiveness the Stoic way is about reclaiming our own power and agency. It's about refusing to let others' actions dictate our emotional state or sense of worth. It's about choosing to respond to hurt with understanding, to anger with compassion, to resentment with release. This is not easy work and it's rarely a linear process. We may forgive and then feel the anger resurface. We may need to forgive the same person or incident multiple times. But with practice, forgiveness can become a habit, a default response that allows us to navigate interpersonal hurts with greater resilience and grace. And as we practice this habit, we may find that it has a ripple effect. By modeling forgiveness, we invite others to do the same. We contribute to a culture of greater understanding, empathy, and emotional maturity. We become agents of peace in a world that sorely needs it. Lesson 9. Cultivating Contentment in the Face of Disrespect One of the most profound gifts of Stoicism is its emphasis on contentment, the art of being satisfied with what we have, who we are, and what we're doing, regardless of external circumstances. This inner sense of fulfillment and sufficiency is a powerful antidote to the sting of disrespect. When we base our sense of worth and well-being on others' opinions and treatment of us, we give away our power. We make our happiness contingent on factors outside our control, leaving ourselves vulnerable to the whims and barbs of others. But when we cultivate contentment from within, we create an unshakable foundation of self-worth and peace. The Stoics understood that true contentment comes not from having everything we want, but from wanting what we have. It's about aligning our desires with what is in our control and finding joy and purpose in the present moment with all its imperfections and challenges. In the context of dealing with disrespect, this means shifting our focus from what the other person is doing or saying to our own inner state. It means asking ourselves, what do I need in this moment to feel grounded, centered, and at peace with myself? The answer may be a deep breath, a moment of self-compassion, a reminder of our own values and strengths. Cultivating contentment also means practicing gratitude for what we have, rather than fixating on what we lack. When faced with disrespect, it's easy to get tunnel vision, to let that one negative interaction color our entire perception. 
but by actively choosing to appreciate the good in our lives, our supportive relationships, our strengths and skills, the beauty of the world around us, we counterbalance that negativity. This doesn't mean denying or minimizing the hurt of disrespect. It's not about pasting on a fake smile and pretending everything is okay. Rather, it's about broadening our perspective, reminding ourselves that this one difficult moment is not the totality of our experience. Another key aspect of cultivating contentment is aligning our actions with our values. When we're living in integrity with what matters most to us, we're less easily shaken by others' opinions. We know that our worth comes from who we are and how we show up in the world, not from how others treat us. This might mean choosing to respond to disrespect with kindness and understanding, even if it's not reciprocated, because compassion is a core value for us. It might mean setting a firm boundary and walking away from a toxic situation, because self-respect and safety are non-negotiable. When our actions are grounded in our deepest values, we feel a sense of rightness and contentment, even in challenging circumstances. Cultivating contentment is an ongoing practice, not a one-time achievement. It requires us to continually check in with ourselves, to notice when we're getting caught up in external validation or materialistic striving, and to gently redirect our attention to what truly nourishes us. This practice is supported by many of the other Stoic lessons we've explored. Mindfulness, self-reflection, focusing on what we can control, reframing challenges as growth opportunities. All of these tools help us develop that inner sense of sufficiency and well-being, that capacity to find peace and purpose in the present moment. Importantly, cultivating contentment doesn't mean settling for less than we deserve or tolerating mistreatment. It's not about being passive or resigned. Rather, it's about finding an inner source of strength and stability that allows us to navigate life's challenges with greater resilience and clarity. When we're content within ourselves, we're better able to assess situations objectively, to identify what needs to change and take appropriate action. We're less reactive to the ups and downs of external circumstances, more able to stay true to ourselves and our path. In this way, contentment becomes a kind of superpower in the face of disrespect. It allows us to maintain our equilibrium, our sense of self, even when others are trying to knock us down. It gives us the inner resources to respond with wisdom, compassion and integrity, rather than getting caught in cycles of negativity and retaliation. Lesson 10. Changing Perspective Throughout these lessons, we've explored various Stoic strategies for navigating disrespect, from understanding what's in our control, to practicing mindfulness and compassion, to setting boundaries and cultivating contentment. But sometimes, despite our best efforts, disrespect can still get under our skin. It can linger in our minds, coloring our mood and sapping our energy. This is where the final Stoic lesson comes in, changing our perspective. The Stoics understood that our experience of reality is shaped by the lens through which we view it. The same event can be interpreted in multiple ways, each with its own emotional charge and behavioral consequences. In the case of disrespect, we might default to seeing it as a personal attack, a reflection of our own inadequacy or a grave injustice. These interpretations naturally lead to feelings of hurt, anger, or despair. But what if we could change the lens? What if we could find a perspective that allows us to respond with greater wisdom and equanimity? One powerful perspective shift is to view disrespect as a reflection of the other person's inner state, rather than a statement about our own worth. When someone lashes out or belittles us, it's often a projection of their own insecurities, fears, or unresolved pain. As the saying goes, hurt people hurt people. This doesn't excuse their behavior, 
but it does take some of the personal sting out of it. We can recognize that their disrespect says more about them than it does about us. We can choose to respond with compassion for the suffering that might be driving their actions, even as we set clear boundaries around how we allow ourselves to be treated. Another perspective shift is to view disrespect as an opportunity for growth and self-discovery. Every challenging interaction can teach us something about ourselves, our triggers, our values, our patterns of thought and behavior. By approaching these experiences with curiosity rather than condemnation, we can extract valuable lessons. Perhaps a co-worker's dismissive comment reveals an area where we need to assert ourselves more clearly. Perhaps a friend's hurtful remark shines a light on an insecurity we need to address within ourselves. By reframing disrespect as a catalyst for personal development, we shift from a victim mentality to an empowered one. We can also practice putting disrespect in perspective by zooming out and considering the bigger picture. In the grand scheme of our lives, how much does this one interaction really matter? Will we still be dwelling on it a year from now or even a week from now? By recognizing the transient nature of most slights and spats, we can loosen their grip on our mental and emotional energy. This doesn't mean disregarding patterns of chronic disrespect or abuse, which may indeed require significant action and change. But for the everyday frictions and frustrations, a dose of perspective can be a powerful balm. Ultimately, changing our perspective on disrespect is about choosing the story we tell ourselves. We can choose to view ourselves as victims, powerless in the face of others' misbehavior. Or we can choose to see ourselves as resilient agents, capable of finding meaning and growth in even the thorniest of interactions. This choice isn't always easy, and it's not a one-time event. We may need to consciously redirect our thoughts and reframe our interpretations again and again. But with practice, this perspective shift can become more habitual, a default lens that allows us to navigate interpersonal challenges with greater grace and resilience. And as we change our own perspective, we may find that we start to influence the perspectives of those around us by modeling a response to disrespect that is grounded in wisdom, compassion and inner strength. We invite others to rise to that level. We create a ripple effect of more thoughtful, constructive interactions. In the end, this may be the greatest gift of changing our perspective on disrespect. Not just the personal peace and empowerment it brings, but the positive impact it can have on our relationships and communities. By choosing to see and respond to disrespect differently, we become agents of change, contributing to a culture of greater understanding and respect. As we come to the end of our exploration of Stoic wisdom for handling disrespect, let's take a moment to reflect on the journey we've taken. We began by understanding the dichotomy of control, the recognition that while we can't control others' actions, we can always control our own responses. This simple but profound insight is the foundation upon which all other Stoic practices are built. We then explored the importance of embracing wisdom, responding with compassion and practicing mindfulness in the face of disrespect. These tools help us navigate challenging interactions with greater clarity, empathy and equanimity. We discovered how reframing disrespect as an opportunity for growth and learning can shift us from a victim mentality to an empowered one. We learned the art of maintaining inner peace, even amidst external chaos, by focusing on what is within our control and practicing self-care. We delved into the nuances of setting boundaries with stoic wisdom communicating our needs clearly and firmly while still treating others with respect and compassion. We explored the transformative power of forgiveness, not as a pardon for bad behavior, but as a gift of freedom and peace we give ourselves. We considered how cultivating contentment and shifting our perspective can radically alter our experience of disrespect, 
allowing us to find inner stability and even opportunity in the face of adversity. Throughout these lessons, a common thread has emerged. The understanding that our power lies not in controlling others, but in mastering ourselves. By developing our inner resources of wisdom, compassion, resilience and peace, we become less dependent on external validation and less vulnerable to the slings and arrows of disrespect. But this mastery is not a destination, it's a lifelong journey. Practicing these stoic principles is like tending a garden. It requires daily attention, patient cultivation, and a willingness to weather the inevitable storms. There will be times when we falter, when we react, rather than respond, when we get caught up in the heat of the moment. In these instances, self-compassion is key. We can choose to view our missteps not as failures, but as learning opportunities, chances to deepen our understanding and strengthen our practice. As we integrate these lessons into our daily lives, we may find that we not only handle disrespect more skillfully, but we also become more resilient in the face of all of life's challenges. We develop a more grounded, centered way of being in the world, less tossed about by the winds of external circumstance. And perhaps most importantly, as we embody these principles of wisdom, compassion and respect, we start to be the change we wish to see in the world. By responding to disrespect with dignity and grace, we create a counterpoint, a model of a different way of being. We invite others, through our example, to rise to their highest potential. In this way, our personal practice becomes a form of social activism, a quiet but powerful way of shaping the world around us. By choosing to meet disrespect with wisdom and compassion, we contribute to a culture of greater understanding, one interaction at a time. So as you go forward from here, remember that you have within you a wellspring of wisdom and strength, a capacity for resilience and grace that can meet any challenge. The Stoic path is not always easy, but it is deeply rewarding, offering a way to find peace, purpose, and connection, even in the midst of life's struggles. Keep learning, keep practicing, keep growing. And know that in your commitment to living with wisdom and integrity, you are not only transforming your own life, but also contributing to the betterment of the world. As Epictetus, one of the great Stoic philosophers said, progress is not achieved by luck or accident, but by working on yourself daily, May your daily practice bring you ever closer to the wisdom, resilience and peace that is your birthright. And may your light shine brightly, illuminating the way for others.